Hey guys, I'm Andrew with the Sandbox, and this is the workflow portion of the Structure I.O. kit. Now here I'm going to focus on what to do after you finish your 3D scan. How to get it from the ITSE's 3D app on your iPad to a place where you can view it, share it, and embed it in your news story. First of all, we're going to need a web gallery to store the 3D scans, and to do that, we're going to sign on to Sketchfab. Now, if you've never used Sketchfab before, it's sort of a YouTube or Instagram of 3D models and digital animation, and you can find and download all different kinds of assets from different users. Uh, you can search for uh, 3D assets by uh, the type of object that they are. And of course, you can upload your own. You can sign up for free or subscribe to pro or business accounts so you can upload larger files and access more features. Now luckily, we've got you covered here. Uh, we've set up a Sketchfab account specifically for testing this kit, and you're welcome to use it. You'll find the login information inside the kit. All right, so once you've signed into the Sketchfab account, there's a key piece of information you're going to need to know, and that is the API number, which you can find by going to your account, settings, password, and API, and there it is. Now you're going to need to copy this number down because Entering this number will allow you to import models into Sketchfab from any other piece of software that exports them. Now for this kit, we've already used our Sketchfab's API number to connect our Sketchfab account with its Seas 3D, but if you decide to set up your own Sketchfab or buy your own structure kit, this is a part of the setup you'll need to know how to do. Alright, now let's go back to its Seas 3D. Here you go back to the gallery, My Models, select whichever one you want to add to the Sketchfab account, and hit the share icon in the upper right corner, that's the box with the arrow, and choose share to Sketchfab. Enter the Sketchfab account's API number in the Sketchfab token box. Give it whatever name or description you want. And hit export. It sees 3D will export the model into your Sketchfab account. And there it is. And if you hit the embed button here, you can use this code to insert this whole interactive viewing window uh, with the 3D model into your article, the same way you'd add a YouTube video or a Google map. Before we do that though, there are still plenty of steps we can take to fine tune this image for public display, so let's take a look at the 3D settings. Now here we have a series of tools and options that'll let us customize both the way the object itself looks and the 3D display window. And I'm going to take you through the options here really quickly. Now here in our general settings, we can adjust the scale and the position of the object, and also tell Sketchfab how to render it. And uh, we've got other menu options here. Uh, lighting, and this actually controls the way that the entire display window is lit, as you can see from brightness here. And orientation above it, which controls the angle at which the light hits the object. Other options here include materials, which control the mesh and texture files of the object, post-processing filters, which we'll play around with in just a second, along with the annotations that we can add to the display. Other things to add, animations. Virtual reality, which uh, you can view the object in a VR headset, and these settings adjust how big the object looks in relation to the person viewing it in VR. And you can also add sound. This allows you to add any sound file that will play over the image display. Now any sound that you add uh, will auto play when you open the display window, so you're going to want to keep that in mind. Now with all that said, um, we're going to make some adjustments here, starting off in general settings. And we're going to start by rotating the image to adjust the size and the angle its default display is. Now these arrows here will rotate the object in 90 degree increments on its X, Y, and Z axis. So we're going to play around with these really quickly. Now for a more full control, to get kind of the exact position, click on Show Advanced Rotation and use those three uh, color-coded wheels there in the center of the screen to uh, rotate the object in 3D space. And we're going to work with each of these until we've got the angle and the position that we're happy with. Okay, now let's scale it up a little so that it appears closer to us. Now I'm doing this by using the two-finger pinch and zoom on my uh, touchpad here. That looks pretty good. So from there I'm going to adjust the render settings. Now Sketchfab adds its own in-software lighting, uh, which will look a little washed out unless you've 
scanned the object under perfect lighting. So whenever I do this, I always like to render it shadeless. I think that kind of provides us with a better balance of light and texture across the object. All right, so beyond this point, I'm going to skip over the materials, uh, which is kind of more advanced tweaking here, and go right to post-processing filters. Now these are definitely worth playing around with. Little adjustments you can make to the image here. Now they are as simple as turning on an on and off switch. They've got more advanced settings here. But I would say it's worth it to just try switching them on and off and taking note of what they add to the image here. Uh, depth of field, among other things, creates the illusion of um, objects that are further away being in less tight of a focus here. Sharpness I like, I, I like, particularly for the texture that it adds to the image. Got a couple of other features here. Uh, vignette, which kind of dims the perimeter of the image here, kind of keeps it in the center spotlight. Bloom, which enhances the kind of glowing light that reflects off of the object. And a couple of others. So just play around with these and figure out what adjustments really kind of make your image look best. Now, if you want to add a little interactivity to the model, uh, one feature Sketchfab offers us here is the ability to add annotations. Now, annotations are little hotspots that bring up little windows of text. And to these, we can add little factoids, uh, little points of interest here. And one thing to note, you can also add hyperlinks here. And in addition to these little hotspots, uh, one thing you can do here is adjust that the angle that the model will turn to whenever you click on the annotation. So I'm going to set it to turn front and face the camera whenever I click on annotation number one. And by clicking that little camera icon, I've programmed this to be the default angle that annotation one displays at. All right. So when you've got all the settings done, uh, make sure that you save your work. The Save View button on the left side of the screen, that sets the thumbnail and the default position of the object. And the Save Settings button on the right saves all the changes you've made. Save all settings before you close out. And there's the annotation, and when I click on it, there. The model rotates to the angle that we set it to. And that takes care of the basic workflow. You are now ready to scan and share your own 3D objects. Let us know what you think, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email us. And as always, thank you so much for watching.